Hello and welcome to another episode of Bike Radar's Rabble Diaries. We are here, this is Felix, I'm Liam. We're here at Battle on the Beach uh, in South Wales. It's a kind of eggsy gravel cyclocross race that happens along a very big beach and it goes back through a load of single track. Honestly, we haven't even ridden the thing yet and we are just hyped about this. There are some incredible bikes here. Bikes are as wild as that ocean out there. We are going to do the event and then we're going to go and take a look at all of that brilliant tech we're gonna check it out but first we got to get around the thing yeah let's fall out of slower this lap. I am absolutely gassed. Long way to go on this beach. Well, I wasn't expecting that. I said a bunch of people overtake me and someone cleared me from behind. And yeah, I went full on into the ground. So, I had a bit of a clean up just to check things over and yeah I think the wind might be over now I'm okay and I'm gonna keep going just enjoy the rest of the day my number on my tire so the last time there's a slight split in the route towards the end where there's a bit more single track than uh, finish will await me Oh, that's so you done. Oh my god. <laughs> now the adrenaline and the heart rate is cooled down. We're going to get some refreshments. Yeah, we absolutely must have the ball of them refreshed. Yeah. And then uh, we're going to go see some bikes. And now I'm joined by Maddie Nutt, who just got third place in the Women's Open. First of all, a massive check down there. Is that going up on the wall? Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. I actually have a bike room, so I think it's going to go in the... Oh, <laughs> just right in front of the turbo. Yeah, That's it's just as like inspiration. Motivation. Yeah. Perfect. Maddie, you've got GRX Di2 on this bike. What gearing are you running? So I've got a 42 chain ring, yeah. which isn't huge, but I always find it's, it's kind of plentiful. And then I've got... Um, 1140 on the back. One of the things I wanted to point out is that you've got quite a, a standard flat tread pattern here, Victoria Terreno Dry. Was that enough for you? Like in the wood section, how was so that? In the woods, when it wasn't muddy, yeah. perfect. Yeah. We didn't, I mean, I personally didn't expect mud today, but it rained last night really, really heavily. Okay, so Maddie, on to the wheels now. What are your tyres mounted on? So I'm riding the Parkour's Ronda today, yep. um, which is kind of their all-road wheel set. Um, I, I really, really like this wheel set. I was riding the Stradas before, which had much deeper rims. And I think, yeah, given the crosswinds today, I definitely think that this was the right, like, rim depth for today. Right, well, thank you very much, Maddie. Next bike. Well, I've now been joined by Chris Ophi. Chris. How did you get on today and did you have fun? And what is your bike? I definitely have fun. Yeah. I have no idea how I got on, yeah. but this is my Lapierre Pro Race 4.9, which is a hardtail and I really enjoyed riding it. However, I do feel like watching everyone on the gravel bikes with the narrower bars and the, the lower rolling resistance of the tires, the file treads, I felt like I was giving away a little bit of efficiency, 
but it was perfectly good. I really enjoyed riding it and anyone that fancies racing a hardtail here absolutely should. First, I want to talk about this stem. Some people's back w backs will be hurting just looking at this thing. So with my background in road racing, I really like a low front end yeah. and actually having a low head tube with the forks on the mountain bike, everything's up a little bit. Maybe yeah. if I wanted to get really nerdy with it, I could put on some rigid forks and um, lower the front end a little bit. But I really like the longer stem because it makes it a similar length to my road bike. And having that slightly lower front end just puts me on my wrists and my hands a little bit more, which for me takes the pressure off my lower back. We've got 110 mil of travel up here. 100 mil of travel on the front. 100 mil. Uh, boost forks. And then it's, it's completely standard as the bike came actually. I, the only thing I've changed is that stem also, this isn't an expensive bike, is it? It's what, 14, 1500? 14.99, which makes it the most affordable bike I've ridden for a very, very long time. <laughs> I've spent the last three days riding it and absolutely loving it, and, and I've, I've loved it. Lovely. Right, next bike. Right, something a bit special here because we've seen mountain bikes, we've seen gravel bikes, we've seen tandems, we've seen fat bikes, but this is a bit of an all-rounder. Um, Richard, it must be quite good because you won. So tell me about your bike. It's a, it's a crossing between gravel and, and beach racing. It's meant for both, the, both disciplines. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we use it all year long. And uh, for this specific race, we have a, a specific setup, especially with the tires. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it went good today with, these, yeah. with this bike. <laughs> it must have done. Um, these tires, they're huge. What, what size are they? Yeah, so these are uh, about six centimeters wide. We ride with about like 1.1 bars in it, which is actually pretty high. Actually, yeah, for the size of the tire, that yeah. is quite a lot. So when we race, uh, when we do a beach race in Holland, which is like 100% on the beach, yeah. we usually have that. Then we ride about like 0.8. Yeah. Uh, but for this specific race, the battle on the beach, it was like, uh, a, a combination of gravel, sand, and dunes, and, and beach. So we just put the pressure a little bit up. This front end looks like it's set up to be quite aero, quite yeah. narrow. What have you got here? This is a Dida bar? Yeah, correct. And this specific uh, bar is, is, is really good to put your wrists on. Yeah. So for me, this is the perfect combination. I've now been joined by Ben, who has brought along his Trek Pro Caliber 9.7. Uh, this is a lovely lightweight XC bike. Is it the perfect bike for the day? I think for me it was. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, for me it was. You had a nice bit of compliance in the rear end, I assume, with the ISO speed. Yep. Also, I want to touch on the fact that you're running the Pirelli Scorpion tyres, because to me, who was on someone that was on file treads, this looks like all of the grip that I needed and didn't have. I love these tyres. I've run other tyres, um, but in the corners it was great, yeah. And then down the beach, it's a, it's a little bit thinner in the middle, so yeah. yeah. Um, and then up front, um, one really nice tech point I want to touch on is these lovely ESI grips. Though, someone's had a crash here, haven't they? I had a crash today, yeah. I lost my head unit, had to go back for it in I the know. sand. Yeah. Oh, lucky it didn't get buried. <laughs> it did. It did it got, yeah, it I, I dropped the bike, went back for it. I looked down to see what, what my heart rate was and it wasn't there. So Ben, what are you running in terms of fork up here? Rockshop, 110 yeah. mil. Um, turned it on and off as I pleased. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you've got the remote lock out there. I have, yeah. So on the beach, it's fully locked out, <laughs> <Yeah>. obviously. <laughs> um, and then through the techie sections, I just turned it on and off. With. Awesome. Next bike. Well, double trouble now here because I've got Jess and Dan Evans. Two Cannondales, but two very different approaches. We're going to take a look at them individually. Okay, well, Dan, you have got the gravel version of the Super 6. Can you run me through it, maybe starting with why you chose this frame? Yeah, so this is the Super 6 Evo CX. So this okay. is actually the, the, the cyclocross, cyclocross spec. Cycling. Yeah, okay. so that's that comes with um, some SRAM force, 11 speed. Um, by mechanical shifting. Yeah, well. mechanical. Oh, yeah, it's it's a group set that's been around for a long time. But for cross for cross racing and anything like this, where you're in real dirty conditions, it works brilliantly. Really maximised your tyre clearance. Yeah. 50 millimetre. Yeah. So the bike's officially 
Um, they recommend up to 45 mils, yep. but I managed to just about squeeze in some 50s um, on some some nice wide hunt rims. So yep. um, they're the Limitless Aero road rims, really wide. So it, it just gives that 50 mil tire a, an extra bit of width, which when you're trying to float over the sand, um, both on the dunes and the beach, yeah. you know, that, that extra sort of floatiness to it makes a, makes a big difference. Awesome. Should we take a look at Jess's bike? I have to say, just from here, this is a properly tricked out bike. We've yeah. got the high mod version of the scalpel hardtail. Yeah. We've got the carbon lefty. Yeah. We've got XTR. <laughs> God. Really... She's a black beauty. Yeah, it's absolutely <laughs> yeah. gorgeous. No, bike. it's an absolutely superb bike, and yeah, it's it's a pleasure to ride. It really is fast, and and it responds really well. Now, with the grip in the corners, what tyres are you running? Um, so I went for the Continental Race Kings in 2.2s. It was really really good. Loads of grip through the uh, the sand and stuff like that, and yeah, it was amazing. Well, it's now the next day. As you can probably tell, we're back in Bristol. And yes, Felix is not here because he is nursing a very serious leg injury. Serious. Anyway, I thought I'd take a look at my bike. It's now cleaned to perfection because that's the way that bikes should be. This is my Specialized Crux Pro. This I chose basically because of the paint. I think it looks incredible. It is nearly stock, but I did make a few changes. First of all, nice big long stem to get the position that I like. That comes from my road background. I like to be nice and low at the front. So I've lowered the front end a lot. Um, we've got a Pro Vibe bar, a 40 centimeter, because that's what I'm used to riding. Um, and then I've got this out front mount, which allows me to fit a GoPro and bring you lovely, lovely footage. The rest of the bike, the only thing that has really changed is the tires. Now, I run these beautiful Challenge Strada Bianca tires. These are 45 millimeters wide. And as you can see, they are a file tread. Now, at the rear, this was perfect because this was so, so fast on the sand. At the front, no one had told me about the mud. So I would have loved to have some tread up there or I could maybe have run lower pressures my off-road skills aren't really what they should be right now. Uh, so if you came up to me in the wooded section and I got in your way, I'm very sorry. Anyway, uh, my gearing for this is stock standard. What comes on the bike? This is SRAM Force ETAP Access Explore. So we've got a 10 to 44 tooth cassette in the back and a 40 tooth up front. I have to say, I used all of the gears. There were some really, really challenging sandy hills, really just short, but very, very punchy. So I was spending quite a bit of time changing gear. Great fun course. I thought this bike was brilliant and I thought that my bike was the best there even though I didn't win. I came like 110th. I've just about recovered from all the racing action. So without further ado, let me indulge you in my new bike. This is Cannondale's latest scalpel and it's the HT2 model, and it was an absolute hoot to ride. Much like Liam, and in true bike radar style, I just got this bike out of the box a few days before the race. So I didn't manage to get too much customization done, but let me run you through a few things. So first things first, let me talk about the fork. It is the Lefty Ocho, and it's got 100 millimeters of travel, and you're not seeing things. It is a Lefty, so there's nothing on the right side of the fork here, and that is for a few reasons, it's obviously a lot lighter, but it also means there's less friction too. The Scalpel HD has dropped seat stays down here, and it's got some sculpted flex stays down below for added control and comfort. The bike is built for cross-country racing, and as such, it only weighs 10 kilos, and that's with pedals and bottle cages. As I said earlier, I didn't have much time to kind of fully customize this into a beach racing bike, but I did swap the front tire out for a Maxxis Recon Race. Was this the best bike for the job? For me, 100% yes. I was lacking in my mountain bike skills, so having something like this with a lot more tread and grip and the suspension fork really made what was something a little bit scary into something a lot more fun. Sure, I was jealous of people coming past me way, way quicker on their aero gravel bikes, but surprisingly, this bike did hold its speed pretty well. 
It was either that or the adrenaline that was pumping through me. Can't really tell, but it was pretty good. I had an absolute hoot, so don't forget to let us know what you want to see us do in the next episode of Gravel Diaries. And if you liked the video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out when our next video drops.